All right, so one of the first things I want to do is have the app have a little bit of customization. I want a person to uh, be able to customize the app by um, telling the app our name and having it use our name throughout the, the project so that it's customized. We have to do several things here. We have to ask for user input. We have to capture that input. We have to store that input and retrieve it. This will be a little bit of a taste, a little bit of the tip of the iceberg for eventually storing data like um, in a database. But we're going to do it to start off very simply first. What you can do is open a web browser. We'll go look at the Cordova documentation for a moment and then we'll implement this. You go to uh, cordova.apache.org. In the documentation, there's going to be some plugins that we're going to work with. One of the uh, plugins we'll work with is Dialogs. We have a way to make various dialog boxes, either informational or for user input. JavaScript has a few of them built in, which are very basic. We're going to use these that are a little bit better. So <coughs> let's look at the dialogues plug-in for a moment. Uh, plugin provides access to some native dialog UI elements via a global navigator dot notification object. So native dialog, native elements. Uh, JavaScript can create a simple pop-up with alert, and it can create a pop-up that asks for input with prompt. There's a built-in JavaScript things, but they look like a web browser pop-up. By using the Cordova method of dialogues, we can have it create pop-ups that look a little bit more like part of the operating system. A pop-up that looks more like it came from Android or iOS or Windows Phone or Blackberry or whatever. So basically it's a navigator dot notification and a couple of notifications that we can do. This talks about installing, which we already we already did that a while ago. The methods, the actual commands. Navigator.notification.alert to make just a simple pop-up box that alerts you of something. There's a confirm box and a prompt box. Confirm is going to say like yes or no or whatever, and then we can have that confirm and something else happen. And then a prompt is a pop-up that asks for a user to type something. The fourth type of dialog, or um, kind of feedback, is beep. We can actually make the app beep or play a sound depending on various um, results. <coughs> Navigator.notification.beep, the device plays a beep sound. Uh, so we can access the, the sound in the device and all of that. The one we're going to use is prompt displays a native dialog box that is more customizable than the browser's prompt function. It's basically navigator.notification.prompt method, and it has a bunch of parameters, various options we can plug into it. Message, callback, optional title, optional button labels, and optional default text. Oftentimes in most documentation like this, especially in the Cordova documentation, Things in square brackets are optional. You don't have to put that in and we'll get some defaults, but if we add them in, we will override the defaults. A message is going to be a message that appears in the box. It's a string, so numbers and letters. It's text. We can have it pop up and say, what's your name? Or something. Prompt callback. Callback to invoke with index a button pressed, one, two, three, or when the dialog box is dismissed without a button press, which is zero. And this is a function. 
So this expects a function to go in the second slot, in the second parameter, uh, a result. Because we have the options, we, we're going to be able to put buttons into this, up to three buttons. OK, cancel, maybe. And there's also a zeroth button of, of closing out the box without making a choice. So there's four possibilities in that prompt. Therefore, we need a way to deal with the possibilities of what the person clicked on. A function. Optional is the title. At the top of the box, we can have it say whatever we want. It's optional. If we don't say anything, it'll say prompt. We should put something. Button labels. Array of strings specifying button labels. So what you plug into the fourth uh, parameter is an array. It will be in square brackets, like a JavaScript array. Remind me what's an array. A variable full of variables, a collection of variables, a collection of elements. So here I have to specify an array, a collection of possible names for the different buttons in my dialog box. The option, or the defaults are OK and cancel. So we would have to do it in this way. Our OK button would be titled OK and our cancel would be cancel. We can change this, of course, to say yeah. Or nah. And we can put whatever we want there in that syntax. Square brackets, because it's an array. Quotes, because it's a string. And then separated by commas. And we can have a third one. There's OK, there's cancel, there's maybe. That would be a third button. And then default text. Default text input value string optional. Default is empty string. Uh, this is like setting up uh, as a guide of what a person could type in here. I think we've seen it a little bit when we looked at basic input boxes. I believe we had default text that appears to guide the person what to type. So we can put that in. It's optional, but the default is empty. One of the important things here is to understand how this callback works, and we see that a lot in JavaScript and in most programming languages. The idea is try to do something and you're going to get a result, often a positive or a negative result. It succeeded or it failed. So we have to deal with that result, often with a function that is called, and some data is usually automatically passed into the function, such as success or fail or zero or one or yes or no or something. <coughs> So the prompt callback executes when the user presses one of the buttons in the box. The results object passed to the callback contains the following properties. So the data that automatically gets passed to the callback function is going to have an object called results. And results is going to be an object with a few properties. Button index and input 1. The index of the press button. Note that the index uses one based indexing, so the value is one, two, or three, which is, you know, completely against most of what is always uh, used when we count things. We start counting with zero uh, in uh, most computer languages. Here we need to keep track that one is the first one, and two is the second, and three is the third button, not zero or one or two. It's one, two, three. So we will be able to tell exactly which of the three possible buttons did the person click on. It was either button 1, button 2, or button 3. And whatever they typed into the input box gets passed back as the input 1 dialog box. Here's an example. A function called onPrompt with results um, parameter. What's happening is first we're, we're running the prompt method. We're creating a prompt. It's going to have, please enter your name in quotes, comma. The result is going to be on prompt, going back there. On the dialog box at the top, the title will say registration. In quotes, comma, 
and then the buttons say either OK or exit uh, as an array. And then if uh, I wanted to tell people, well, what you should type here is your name, there's a string. No final comma. Be very careful about that. This really varies on programming languages. Some of them always have a comma at the end of, uh, of a list, and some of them don't. In our case here, we don't want a final comma. We want commas in between every other option or parameter. And all that this, all that this example is doing is it's just making a, a plain old alert. And it said, you selected button number. So there's data. There's a result that gets passed. When we try to do prompt, something will happen on prompt. Data gets passed into it. All of the data is stored in that object. So we're saying re results.buttonindex. We know button index is one of the built-in properties of that object. So it'll say one, two, or three. And enter results.input1, whatever the person typed. So this can check what button was pressed and what they typed. And the point of this is we want to ask the user for a name so that we can use that data to put it into our app in various points. So we'll do this. And any questions on, on it conceptually? And then we'll do it. OK, so uh, I need to open up my project. We'll open up the index file and the JS file. So that is inside of your project. WW folder, we need to open index file.html. Question? Yeah, I, I'm sorry, I still, I still not quite sure like, when you get um, the code like this. Because I don't have any way to HTML. All of this that it's telling us here is pretty much JavaScript. So we define all of this in JavaScript, in the JavaScript file. Okay. Uh, we're going to need to look at the HTML and the JavaScript file because uh, oftentimes the JavaScript is kind of linked to the HTML. I click a button that I created in the HTML file, which then launches the code in the JavaScript file. And is there kind of a quick tip to identify okay, this uh, property should be in HTML <coughs> No, there's no short answer about which one should it be. It, it depends on what you're trying to do, but oftentimes the interactivity of something is JavaScript. And oftentimes there's some class or ID attached to HTML that helps trigger the JavaScript. So if you think about it doing anything, it's going to most likely be JavaScript. If we're going to think about styling it, CSS, and then just the structure of it, HTML. So let's, let's open also in the JavaScript folder, let's open the index.js file. So I've got both the index and the JS file. We'll work on the index file first. Um, they're both called index. Uh, we should maybe rename that. The HTML file. We'll work on the HTML file first. I want to create a button that starts all of this, that triggers all of this, to ask for the person's name. I want to do this in, the, uh, in this About screen. If a person goes to the About screen, I want a button here to ask for the person's name, to customize. So we need to find the screen where the about content is at. I think it's near the end. Uh, yep, at about line 184. This is where the about screen is. So we've got an image, we've got a paragraph of text. Let's make a, a new paragraph below and make a button, a jQuery mobile button. So at about line 90, 195 before the end of the article, new paragraph, we'll say uh, personalize. There's going to be a button that will let you personalize the app. Since we're using jQuery mobile, we'll wrap an A tag around it as a link. 
And then here we'll need to do the usual data role equals button, data icon to give it some kind of icon, and then a couple of other things. href we will set as a dummy link going nowhere, but I want it to behave like a button, so I put the href pound. Data role button. And data icon. We have one called user. This just puts a little person into the icon. And lastly, we need an ID. Now, uh, the ID in the class, remember, is CSS, but JavaScript has sort of evolved to really take advantage of CSS as well, as a, sort of like an anchor, as a way to reference something easier or faster in HTML. JavaScript is very powerful, very useful in that it can reference and change HTML. It can reference and change CSS. Um, JavaScript can create HTML from scratch or CSS from scratch. And what has happened over the years of, of web design, over the 25 years of web design, is that JavaScript has really relied, become, come to rely a lot on HTML elements having an ID or a class to be able to reference them. We'll call this btn name. This is a button that is going to ask for the user's name. This is arbitrary. This ID, we're making it up but it's any sort of name that helps me remember what it is once I see it in my hundreds of lines of code. <clears throat> yes? Yes, that highlighted line to make a button. All right, so uh, this button, I'm going to save that. This button will, uh, once a user presses it, it'll start this whole process of launching that Cordova code. So we'll switch over to the JS file, and based on the um, Based on the uh, documentation that we just saw, we're going to create a, a pop-up box. So in the JS file, we always need to work inside of this received event function. So we already had button URL. Uh, the event handler and then the function uh, definition. So after the function definition, line 45, we're going to do something pretty much the same. jQuery to reference an HTML object 
on click run a function. So we'll start the same thing here. The jQuery selector. This is very powerful. It looks unassuming, but it's very powerful. It lets us select just about anything in an HTML file. We just need to be able to call its name. In quotes, pound btn name. We're saying document.getElementById. Up there, basically, we said document.getElementById. Basically. And here it's document.getElementById. On method, we're saying that once we, once some sort of event happens, do something, and the event that we're usually looking for is a click, <clears throat> comma, the name of a function. We don't need to be very complex here. We'll just call the name of the function. We don't need this function part. We we needed function to be able to pass the object that was clicked. In this case, not necessary. So we will simply call a function called getName. <coughs> so the syntax, if we don't need to do anything special with passing in values and such, just the name of the function, no parentheses. If we do need to do something fancy, passing data into a function, we have to wrap an, an, an unnamed function around it first. Let's make a note there. That might be useful to know later. I'm going to back up to the previous one, single line comment. Uh, if we need to pass data into a function, wrap it in an anonymous function first. Conversely, if we don't need to pass data to a function, just call it without parentheses. Parentheses. That's what we're doing here. We just need to call that function to do something. We don't need to pass data into it. So we just we just invoke it. Up there we need an anonymous function first. Next line we will define this function. Get name. We're inventing it. There's no built-in function in JavaScript or Cordova called get name. We're going to invent it because it needs to do several things. Do that prompt, process the data, store it, retrieve it, show it on screen. So get name, open close parentheses, close curly brace. This function is going to be more complex than the previous one. The previous one really only had it uh, opening up, up a web browser because this one will be many more lines. I want to make myself a note here that this is the end of my get name function. As I scroll through hundreds of lines of code, I'm going to lose track of what I'm looking at. So I find it helpful for myself. End of get name function. And with my color scheme, I know to look out for the green lines, which are comments. And if I give myself comments throughout my code, I give myself signposts and information for myself to keep me on track. Okay, so we, what we want to happen here is we start to use that Cordova code. Navigator dot notification dot prompt open close parentheses.
So remember the documentation, what that's saying is that it's going to make a simple pop-up appear. Um, Notification.prompt. So we need to fill in two required elements, and then there's a couple that are optional. We can put all of them in one line, or we can divide them into multiple <coughs> lines so it's a little easier to read. I'll say I'll break it up into multiple lines, kind of like the documentation. So I'm going to press enter to break those parentheses onto multiple lines. And then in between is where I'm going to fill in the, the, three, uh, the three parameters. I want a text to appear. So in quotes, it's a string. Enter your name. The dialog box will say enter your name in the main area. This is one of the required uh, properties, uh, parameters, comma, enter. And we'll then uh, have the callback function got name, OK. Those would be the only two that are required, but I want to add comma. I want to also change the name of the buttons. The default buttons, I think, are like, you know, save and OK or, or something. So I want to name them myself to something else. Uh, so I need first the square brackets for an array, and then in quotes, just to, sh just to show this obviously, we'll, we'll choose better names a little later. Go, comma, no. <clears throat> My buttons. <clears throat> my buttons will say go or no instead of cancel or save or whatever the defaults are. No final comma, that was my last parameter that I wanted to add. Uh, and so you see the syntax of it. There's the first uh, parameter, comma, the second, and then the third. We then need to define what got name OK is. After the end of the prompt, we will add a new line to define the function got name OK. End of got name OK. So the function prompt, or the method prompt, expects a result, yeah. and it expects to handle a result in, <coughs> in a callback function, which we have called got name OK. So then we have to process it. Well, what happens is we get results. The documentation, I believe, calls it results. This can be anything. This would be kitty cat, if you want. Results. We get results. We get a result from the prompt. We get data passed into the got name OK function. I want to, um, just to get practice with this, to the console. I want to see results. I want to display results. Dot. <clears throat> uh, button index. Capital I on the index. And also console log on the next line. Results. Dot input one. Just to test this out, because with most programming, it's building little by little to accomplish something big. At this point, I want to see that I'm on the right track. I've got a button that should trigger some JavaScript. The JavaScript should create a pop-up box. 
I'm going to type in something to the box and click OK or cancel, and I want to see if that's working so far. If that is, then I can go forward about actually retrieving the proper name, storing it somewhere, and then the other stuff. But I think at this point we can, we can test our work, and we need to do either a Cordova run Android, a Cordova emulate Android, or probably really fast, a Cordova run browser. We should be able to see this, some result in the browser. And I'll remind you in a moment, if you're using a real device, how to see the console on a real device. Just one moment. I'm going to save all your files, and I'm going to run this in, uh, in the browser first. <coughs> I need to go to my F drive, my apps. I'm working with today's work. Cordova Run Browser. So let me check if mine is working. The idea is that when I go to the About screen, I have a brand new button, Personalize. I'm going to also open my console since I'm in the browser. I'm going to click Personalize. I'm going to pop up, Enter Your Name. So I typed in Enter Your Name. Uh, I ha there's a little bit of limitation in the browser. It didn't change the name of my buttons. I can see that in the device in a moment. And if I type a name, click OK, the console tells me, you clicked button 1, which was the OK button. And what you typed in there was a name. If I go back here and instead press a cancel, you click button 2. And you didn't type anything into the box. I type anything and still click cancel, you know, it canceled it. If I want to see if this is working on our tablet, the way I would do it is I would run it in the tablet. Cordova on Android. Once it's running on my tablet, I can still use the Google Chrome developer's tool to look at what's happening on my device because it's an Android operating system and it's an it's a Google operating system on my device, and it's a Google web browser. Depending on the device, I can see the console from my device. So let me just run on my device, and I'll, and I'll show you. I'll remind you. We've, we've seen this before. But I'll remind you that we can view the console output in, in the Chrome browser on an attached device, even a virtual device. <coughs> Guess while that's waiting, I'll put that code back.
Yeah, this is taking way longer than I thought, but uh, yeah, there's my code at that point. Question. One moment, let me see if mine works and then I can help people. So, um, the what I'm looking for is on my real device, I want to debug it. I can use Chrome. Once I've opened up the developer console at least once with F12. I can go to the three dot menu and then more tools and remote devices. Once I'm in remote devices I should see my device connected and my current app running which I can inspect. And depending on your device you're going to be able to see it and also control it. So there I am going to different screens, depending on the device. And I'm trying to go over to the About screen and click Personalize. What I, That Personalize doesn't show up on the browser because now it can't quite see that, but on now my real device, I do have a, a real nice-looking Android-style pop-up. Uh, it still said uh, prompt, enter your name, cancel, and OK. So if I type in a name, click OK, in my console, I'm seeing that result. Then I click button 1, which is the OK button, and I typed in my name. So you couldn't see it here, but I typed it, and the console gave me that output. So that's how we can do debugging on a real Android device. Looking at my code, I think I missed one little thing. The third parameter. Yeah, one more thing. This is what confused it. Uh, there's the parameter of enter your name, call that function, comma. I should have then put the name of the dialog box, comma, then the name of the the button. So let me fix that and then I'll help people. We needed one more item. Sorry about that. It was in quotes, what are we going to pop? What's the name of the box? I'll call it customize. And a comma at the end. So I was trying to put an array into the dialog box title. It ignored it and then kept it. In my case, it still called it prompt and it ignored the names of my buttons. So that's what it should be. Question? How do you check the remote device console? Because I keep going back to the cloud. 
Well, you have to do Cordova run Android dash dash device. The, the kebab menu. Mm -hmm. And then you should see devices, and you should see your device. That's exactly what I'm showing right there. So. Is there any screen that comes in? 
error message. Yeah. Thank you. 
Oh, good. 